Hi friends, my name is Chris and today I want to talk to you about two very different programs, but they are tackling a similar challenge, and that is screen recording. For this video, I want to focus on ScreenFlow and OBS Studio. These are these two programs, and they have a very different price point, with one being completely free, as in open source, and you can actually theoretically change things yourself, and the other one is by Telestream, and it costs around 129 US dollars, or at least it's starting at that price point. Now in this video, I want to talk about some of the differences in these two programs and where one might be better than the other. And I definitely think that both of them have very good use cases. However, I also think that there is a pretty clear winner in terms of which one I would probably choose as I am moving forward. Now this is how they basically look when you start them up. OBS has a full featured interface, and then on the other hand you have ScreenFlow, which has this small little window right here before you start making a recording. And I think that is also a good point to start talking about the major differences in these two programs. And that is that ScreenFlow is mainly dedicated towards screen recordings and actually also has functionality around the topic of editing those recordings. And that is actually also one of the main benefits that ScreenFlow has over OBS because if you want a all-in-one solution, which includes the screen recording for your camera, so you can include your webcam or any other webcam type camera, and you also might wanna do things like, for example, showing the keystrokes that you're doing on screen and much, much more, then ScreenFlow is a very interesting situation or a very interesting program. It also features things like a stock library of video footage that you can use. It basically is a fully featured video editor with certain limitations. OBS, on the other hand, is a program which is not necessarily focused on the screen recording part, it is just something that it can do as well. As in OBS is actually made for live streaming. Based on the name Open Broadcaster Software, this is the main purpose to be able to live stream to things like YouTube and Twitch and other platforms. Now with that, however, they also included recording capabilities. And by doing that, you of course also can do screen recordings. Again, one of the main punching points of OBS is that it is completely for free. You can just simply download it, create whatever scenes you want and include yourself or not, have different audio sources or not, and do your screen recordings. However, at the end of those recordings, you will just end up with one single video file that you then have to edit in another program. However, there are of course also free options. For example, if you are using a Mac, then iMovie is already included in the installation of macOS. And then if you are on Windows or macOS, you can always also use DaVinci Resolve, which has a free version that you can use for video editing like that as well. And in my opinion, those programs like iMovie and DaVinci Resolve are more feature rich than the features that ScreenFlow provide except for some of these very specific screen recording functionalities. Now, one more core functionality difference between these two is actually in the way that they do the screen recording and what kind of file you actually end up with. In OBS, what you can do is that you can actually just create your scenes. Like for example, we have this main scene right now and I could actually just take myself make myself a little smaller so that, for example, I'm just included right here in the corner. And then I can go to the little plus icon right there and also do a display capture. And let's add that. And then we have a display capture, which is going to be full screen in my case, because I have my computer screen also set to full HD. And we have to reorder this so that I am again on top of that. Now. What you see here would be exactly what you are recording, as in that is not changeable after the fact. So you can't change the position of your camera after the fact. You cannot move things around and stuff like that. It is what you set up right here. And then you hit record, and at the end you have a MOV or MP4 or MKV file, depending on the setup inside of the OBS record settings which are inside of the preferences, or if you go here into the settings, and then you can go to output, recording, 
And right here, you can make either the advanced settings as I have set them up right now, or you can also go in and use the simple settings. Now, what I can recommend here on macOS at least is to use the Apple VT H.264 hardware encoder if you have it present on your computer because it does not use as much system power as, for example, the X.264 FFmpeg version. And that might not be giving you the exact same quality as the FFmpeg X.264. However, it is again focused on the graphics card and by doing that, not taking as much of your CPU. For example, if you wanna record gameplay or stuff like that, or if you wanna record any high intense programs like Premiere Pro, then those programs will work much better if you use the Apple H.264 encoder right there. I have set the bitrate pretty much at the maximum because I wanna get as much as possible out of those files. Keyframe interval to one. And I think that is pretty much it. I am using the MKV files here because I can just transmux them at the end. And if you wanna learn more about that or have questions around that, of course, you can leave those in the comment section down below. And I will make a video specifically about that or I can help you right there in the comment. But those are pretty much the basic settings. The last one being that you wanna make sure that the canvas is actually the resolution that you actually want to record at. So in my case, it is full HD and at 30 frames per second, which is totally enough for the use case that I'm going for. So this is basically what you end up with. And as I mentioned, if I hit record right here, then I will get that MKV file, which I then can demux or remux by going in and going into the remux recordings. And there it would ask me which files to demux or remux, and then that would be done. So that is the essential setup of OBS. And again, you end up with exactly the things, all of those things that are on the screen as you record them are going to be recorded into that recording. Now on ScreenFlow, it's a bit of a different story. Let's just go that away. And we have the ScreenFlow window right here. And here you actually can just select whatever sources you would like to record. So in my case, let's say I wanna have this monitor right here that we are seeing. I also want to record the video from my face cam. So we have the FaceTime HD camera. We also wanna record the audio from the internal microphone. Just wanna make sure that that is unmuted. So in my case, I'm using sound source. I can just do that right there. If you don't have that, you can go into the system preferences under sound and then input, select your microphone and then choose your recording volume accordingly. Or, and if you wanna use the ambient noise reduction, you can do that as well. But essentially we have all of that set up now. And we also have the record computer audio, which basically makes it very easy for you to just record everything that is going on on the computer. However, you have to make sure that this message here is actually important and you have to make sure that all of that is working. So with all of that set up, I actually had to close off OBS because it was kind of hogging the FaceTime camera and you can only use that FaceTime camera signal in one application. So now I have that camera available right there. I can choose the resolution that I wanna record. And of course I wanna get the highest resolution despite that not being that all high. And now we can just simply hit the record button right there. We have a bit of a screen which tells us which shortcuts to use to essentially stop the recording. And now we are actually recording the main screen and also the camera and the audio and all of those things. So all of that is now recording as we are doing this. And now let's see what we can record. Let's just get the ATM software control, which I'm using. Don't know why that's flickering, but maybe that's interesting to show but let's go back and stop the recording. And actually we can go into the menu bar right there and hit the stop recording button. We can also pause or add markers, which is quite helpful. Stop the recording. And now the ScreenFlow editor is actually going to be opening up and that looks like this. Now, as of right now, we only have this one video recording right here and we don't have multiple. However, if you wanna, for example, add more, we can also just command H this program away. And now we have the desktop again. And now I can go in and go into the record mode again. It just starts doing the exact same thing that was set up before. And now, for example, if I wanna bring over my little HDMI program right there, and we can scroll through whatever happened there. Now that is also being recorded. And again, I can click on stop recording 
And in this case, it is actually going to add me or ask me to add the document to the open one or if I wanna create a new one. So in this case, let's just add this to this track or this clip and also add the clips directly to the timeline so that they are added on top of each other, which is kind of confusing in my opinion. I thought that they would be added at the end, but I guess not. So now, as you can see, you have a setup which basically works just like a normal video editing program. You have your timeline right here at the bottom. You have your different clips at the top right there with all kinds of different settings that you can also make. So this is kind of like your inspector of sorts. And the magic of ScreenFlow is that you actually have these different clips or tracks that you can change and move around. So for example, if I wanna get the camera clip and I wanna move this to the top right there, then I can do that. And I can also put it into the center, make it bigger or make it even the full screen essentially. Like for example, when I wanna to want to start the video out like this, then after a while, let's say right here, I want to make a cut, which is in this case T. And then after that, I can move on and make myself really nice and small, put myself down here in the corner. And now if I go back and play this video, you can see that now I am jumping and it is going to be down there. So the big premise here is that with ScreenFlow, you can actually change those things after the fact. You're not bound by the screen recording that you can do in just one sitting and you have to make all of the cuts and edits right there live before you even finish everything. So you basically have to know beforehand what you wanna do. Kind of like I am filming right here with the Atomos Ninja V and the ATM Mini, which makes it so that I can do things like this and also remove myself and stuff like that. But it means that I have all of those things baked in. I cannot change when I show this here right now and I actually want to show this, I can't do that after the fact because it is baked in. So that's kind of like OBS essentially. And here in ScreenFlow, it's different. You can make those adjustments after the fact. You can actually add callouts, for example, for the mouse pointer after the fact. So I can add action right there. We have the mouse pointer. And if I play the video again, you can see that it actually also follows the mouse pointer if there is mouse pointer movement. So let's see, I can drag this out. And now you can see the action is actually going to follow this mouse pointer and I can change how or what it should be doing. It's going to be the mouse cursor. I wanna have a bit of a blur. How does that look? Opacity, I wanna not have it as strong. Blur the background, that's also, okay. So if I make it like this, then all of the other things around it are actually going to be blurred. Let's just see what happens if I drag this out to when I actually have a window. So now we have this window, you can see with this call out, it actually is blurring everything in the background. You can zoom up so you can actually make it so that the place where you are showcasing or where you're pointing to is actually going to be kind of like bigger. And now you can see that this also moves with the mouse pointer again. So things like that are possible here. And it even goes as far as to being able to actually hide the mouse pointer completely. So now if I remove this call out and if I scrub through this, you can see no mouse pointer whatsoever on this here. And if I put this back on, it is back there. Now, essentially what that means is that ScreenFlow has some magic going on where they're actually able to grab all of these different pieces and record all of that information whilst making the recording. So they're recording the screen separately, they're recording the camera separately, and they're also recording things like keystrokes and also the mouse pointer. The cool thing about all of that is of course the abilities that you have in the aftermath, like for example with these callouts and also with possibilities like hiding the mouse pointer if you don't want to have that included. Now I never really used those callout features and all of those things that ScreenFlow also has as built-in features, mainly because I just want my videos to edit in Premiere Pro. And to do that, I actually have to export everything from ScreenFlow into another format 
and that takes a whole lot of time. The performance of ScreenFlow and the nice features are great if you are just going to be doing everything inside of ScreenFlow and for the $129 you are buying yourself a full screencasting functionality for this type of set where you want to be able to change your camera in the after the fact, you want to do those call out features and all of that, then this might be really interesting. But for me, if I want to demonstrate that for a second, I have to go into File, then to Export. You can also Batch Export, that makes it a little easier. But then here, I have set up a preset, which is a ProRes 422LT file at 24 frames per second with mono audio, because I usually don't care about the audio which is recorded right there. And if you look here, we have 583 megabytes in file size or estimated file size for barely one minute of footage. However, the ProRes, of course, is totally worth it, at least in my opinion, because you will have a much easier time editing this in whatever program you want to use, like Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, or maybe uh, Premiere Pro, which I am using. So that's totally worth it. And again, the performance gain that you get with ScreenFlow might also be worth it. Now to wrap things up, and in my opinion, OBS is the clear winner here because you cannot really beat free. And the quality that OBS provides is definitely a very high one. The only thing that is speaking for ScreenFlow are these call out features and of course also the performance during the recording process. But if you want to edit your files in another program, you have to export them and that takes on a whole bunch of time. With OBS, you might not need to do that because you are going to end up with a file that you could just simply throw into your video editing program of your choice. I also have a tip for you for OBS, which I will link in the description below because that's going to be a separate video, how you can actually record multiple cameras in full quality in OBS like for example, a screen recording and a camera or even two cameras, and then use that file in a program like for example, Premiere Pro to be able to make different layouts and use those very easily with something called multi-camera scenes. So that's going to be coming on this channel. And of course, will be linked in the description below, probably also going to be linked up here if I don't forget to put the card. Now, if you have any questions around this topic, you can ask them in the comment section down below, or you can join my Discord server, which is going to be linked in the description, of course, as well. Now, you have links to both of these programs. Let me know which one you choose or which one you prefer. And with all that said, I hope you have a amazing day. Get your screen recordings in great quality, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.